those of you who don't know me, my name is Emma Richards. Um, I am 21 years old. I love the outdoors, sports, skating, surfing, jumping off waterfalls, reading a book on the beach, my three siblings, four wheel driving, my cat brave, country music, and driving my ute. <laughs> I am currently the youth pastor at Community Baptist Church. Um, where my senior pastor actually just so happens to be the great and mighty golden boy of Kerry, Samuel Sherman. He's, he really set me up with big shoes to fill, what with all his A pluses and being all the lecturer's favourite student. But anyway, enough of that. Today I have been asked to speak on some of my experiences of church. Church has been something that has always been a part of my life. My dad was a youth pastor when I was little and I have vivid memories of many a southern Easter camp flooded and water being way past my knees. Both my parents have been heavily involved in church my whole life and now all of us kids are involved in some way and I love that. I love the church and how much a part of my life it has been. However, that does not mean that I agree with everything that happens within the church, that I have gone through my life thinking that the church is this perfect specimen of what it looks like for Christians to be gathered together as one. No way. <laughs> there are so many questions, thoughts, concerns that I have about the church today. The way the church treats women. The way the church neglects local communities. The way the church is comfortable. The way the church pushes aside the bicultural nature of the country we live in. The sexual abuse that has occurred in churches. And I, too, like many of you, have been hurt by the church, especially in my role as a youth pastor. And there are so many things about the church that aren't good, and the media loves to pick up on these. However, sometimes I feel, as Christians, we spend too much time dwelling on the negative. And yes, it is important to acknowledge the, thing that, the things that the church doesn't get quite right. But as long as this is held hand in hand with the things that the church is doing right. Because there is a lot, a lot of good in the church. So, today, I'm going to focus on church at its best. <laughs> and maybe it's just because I'm a naturally positive, see the best in the situation kind of person. But I really believe that we as Christians need to acknowledge, more often than we do, the good in the body of Christ. So, I've thought of some examples of times in my life and experiences of where I think church has been at its best. Church at its best is a circle of young people after Easter camp, showing what is on their hearts, expressing their stories, expressing the belonging that they feel, the family that they are now a part of. Church at its best is the, yeah, I only came to muck around, but I ended up feeling and experiencing a love that I've never felt before. Church, at its best, is a line of young people at, ex at extend, arms around each other, singing, there is but one love, and it is your love. Church, at its best, is our young people praying and prophesying over each other, and over me. Church, at its best, is the amount of work that members of our congregations put in behind the scenes, serving the community, making sure Sundays happen, that youth happens, that worship happens, that kids' church happens, that the food bank happens. Church at its best is the people of God serving one another. Church at its best is a hi to my Emma and a hug from a young person, along with some encouraging words after a hard week when all I feel like is doing, when all I feel like is crying. <laughs> church at its best is when the family that has been created by genuine relationship and love for God was noticed by people in the community. Church, at its best, is the journey that we get to have with a crying mother who has nowhere else to express her worry and concern for her son and the decisions that he is making. Church, at its best, is celebrating with her when he gets to start a new school, when she starts a new job, when life seems to be a little bit more sunshine. Church at its best is when youth group leaders text their small group boys every Sunday, week after week, asking them if they're coming to church, offering rides, picking them up, even though often they don't see any response. Church at its best is seeing people connect with 
and experiencing God for themselves, wanting to know more about him. Church at its best is seeing people make commitments to follow Jesus, making their faith their own. Church at its best is building relationships with people in the community. It is seeing our community kids' parents who have had nothing to do with church want to be involved in what we are doing at Youth Group, wanting to help out in any way that they can because they see the love that we, through God, have for their children and believe in what we are doing. Church at its best is a baptism of a girl who walked into youth group three years ago, not a Christian, but now walks alongside a faith community who loves and supports her. Church at its best is a tonga carved for a youth pastor by the uncle of one of the youth kids as a representation of the uniqueness that he sees within her and her love for God and young people. Church at its best is a community meal ho hosted by the local church after a week-long power cut. It is everyone jumping in to lend a hand. Church at its best is a group of farmers and New Zealand young adults on their knees in the South African dirt, praying for rain in the midst of a drought. Church at its best is seeing the dam overflowing with water, front yards flooded the very next morning. Church at its best is the support given to families during times of tragedy. Supporting a fam Church at its best is two young adults supporting a family who lost a father, husband and friend in a drunk driving accident. When those two young adults, as the only Christians they know, are able to pray with and for those families, that is church at its best. Church at its best is the support and encouragement shown to young and experienced youth pastors by those legends who have gone before and paved the way. Church at its best is the community that we have here at Kerry the support that we as students give each other and that the lecturers give us during times of stress, hardship and anxiety. Church at its best is a PL cohort standing and supporting each other through the difficulties of ministry, through personal struggles, through mental health complications. Church at its best is when we as Christians realize the deep love that God has for the church. When we remember that we are his body, created by him, for him, and that we are a body that is made up of many different parts. We see God's love for the church in the image of the bride. The church is his bride, and he is coming back for it. Scripture is filled with verses around the love that God has for the church, and many of them we're playing as we sat here before. Matthew 16 verse 18, And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. No matter how far gone the church of the 21st century may seem, how much hurt we and others have experienced, death will not overpower the church. Jesus' death is living proof that he will continue to build his church against all forces of death. Christ loved the church, and he gave his life for it. God's plan is actually for the church to be glorified through it. But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession, and through us spreads in every place the fragrance that comes from knowing him. For we, as the church, are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. 2 Corinthians 2, 14-15 As the church, we are not only the bride whom God loves and is coming back for, but we are also the aroma of Christ to the rest of the world. And this is something that I think needs to be acknowledged and celebrated more often. As we bring bring this little talk of mine <laughs> to a close, we're going to enter into a response time. And I've got two things for us to do today. The first is um, we have communion. And as we take communion, I want you to lay down your hurts, negative thoughts, frustrations that you may have around the church before Christ, 
knowing that while the church isn't perfect because it's full of people on a journey, the church is still the bride and something that God loves and that Jesus gave his life not only for you as individuals, but for the church as a whole. Um, and there's gluten-free bread at the back as well for people who are gluten-free. Um, and the second thing that I want us to do um, is I have a poster up here behind us that has the words grace embodied on it. And what I want you um, to do is, in your own time, once you've taken communion, is to come up here, there's some pens down the front, and to write on, our, on the poster here some things that you are grateful for the church for, mm -hmm. some praises that you might have, some things that you want to celebrate about the body of Christ. And I just, yeah, I would encourage each one of you to try and think of at least one thing, um, even no matter how hurt or how angry or um, upset at the church you may be, to think of maybe one thing that you can celebrate about the church. Um, and after that, I'm going to close us in prayer and lift up our praises that we've written to God and give thanks to him. So, yeah.